Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the next step on the Rattler, which is rear suspension. Um, in the last video you saw the subframe connectors go in, which is going to at least get the front and rear subframes tied together. So now we can start uh, cutting apart and building the rest of the chassis. Uh, I think the next thing I want to do is see about getting the rear end mounted. So. Um, I'll show you here in a few minutes what we're working with, but I've got some fairly big tires going in. At least that's the plan right now. They are, uh, I don't know if they're 30 and a half, 31, something like that. They're a uh, 295, uh, 15 inch, what is that, 65, 75? Let's take a look rather than me trying to guess. Anyway, they're a good size tire and about 11 and a half wide. Uh, let's see. 295, 65, 15. I'll show you here. They're the Mickey Thompson ET streets. Um, but we don't have a whole lot of room in the wheel well. So the rear subframe kind of curves out into the wheel opening a little bit. And with the shape of the arches in the rear quarter panel for the wheels and tires, there's no chance of tucking 11 and a half inch wide tires, and especially at that height. So um, the axle is actually going to be pushed back probably about two or three inches from the stock location. That centers the tire up nicely. It follows the front curve. Um, like I said, it's definitely not going to tuck. Uh, we'll probably try to roll the, uh, the fender lip a little bit, but still, uh, it just is what it is. The, the top of the tire might get inside there some, but not the front. And as you can tell, the back has all kinds of room so we're not too worried about that but anyway the like I said the rear subframe it actually kind of curves out into the, the area where the tires got to be and and with the width of tire we're gonna run it's just that close that I need to get rid of that so uh, what I'm gonna have to do I think is cut out that section and piece it together so I'm gonna show you a little bit about what my plan is and we'll work through it and see if it works Hopefully it does. Uh, if it doesn't, maybe one of you can uh, point out another solution that doesn't include back halfing the car. Um, I think that's just going to get a little more extensive and, and costly than what I want to get into for this project, but who knows? Maybe the only option. So let's take a look at uh, what I'm working with back there and we'll go from there. All right, hopefully you can see that okay. This is the passenger side rear frame rail. And I'm kind of showing you right dead center there on the screen. That's the hump that I'm talking about. And, you know, while slight, um, I've got a white line on the bottom there that kind of shows, just gives you an idea of how far that pushes out. It's about an inch and a half. And really that's just going to have to go away. Uh, the rest of the frame rail is going to fit nicely inside the tire, uh, but that section won't. So I think what I'm going to have to do is cut that along that line and build the frame rail to the inside that matches from here you know to the same spot in the back so effectively getting rid of all this we'll have to lose you know some uh, sheet metal up around here but that's to be expected obviously the old pan hard uh, brackets gonna go away and I think in the end I'm gonna lose some trunk panel too um, you can see kind of the faded spots where the old uh, the suspension was at and in fact, there's the old uh, coil perch, the upper. But uh, if you see that vertical white line right there, that's actually going to be the new center line of the axle. Uh, looks a little strange right now. Looks like it's way, way back in the wheel opening compared to uh, what it should be. But it, it actually works out really well so that when the tire is in here, it, it follows this the front of this arch nicely, comes up, tucks inside, and then comes back out where it needs to be. So I think that's going to work. But in order to do that, like I said, I think we're going to have to support the back half of the car here. And, you know, on the, uh, uh, the tall jack posts, get those supported, cut out that center section, and get rid of all this surface rust. Uh, it's pretty rough, but you've probably come to expect that at this point on this car. And I think what I'm going to do I measured these frame rails. They're about an inch and three quarter in width. And I've got some two inch by three inch rectangular tubing 
that's uh, it's mild steel. I want to say it's something like 90 thousandths wall thickness. Anyway, it gives me inch and three quarter inside dimension, which is almost perfect for the width here. So what I want to do is take you over and show you. Cut off about 18 inches. I've got it marked here, but cut off about 18 inches of that and then take the top set this up right I'll take the top out of this tube actually it looks like 120 wall now that I look at it anyway I'll take the top out make this into a U shape and slide it up over that frame rail um, I'll have to probably do you know some tapering this is 18 inches long the section I'm cutting out is probably only you know about that big so we'll have to you know make a template and kind of follow the curve of the wheel opening front and back but I think this will give a pretty good uh, support structure it'll allow me to mount the cross pipe or cross tube for the uh, coil upper coil over mounts and uh, get us where we need to be um, so hopefully that works out uh, I'll make uh, some follow-ups here and see where we end up all right, I'm going to show you on the driver's side kind of what I was talking about with that rectangle tubing. Just, it's a little easier to see. Uh, you don't have the, the pan hard mount and, and things like that in place. But um, essentially it's, like I said, it's uh, two inch by three inch. So that horseshoe or U shape is going to be two and three quarter, almost two and seven eighths tall. Uh, that's going to bring us up right into about this area. And by the time I cut, cut out this, uh, the bubble section, the 18 inches is going to bring us out roughly in this area and then the same similar over here. So these are the, the curves I was telling you we're going to have to cut out. Uh, just kind of cope it a little bit, you know, follow with the pattern. Um, obviously some spring re remainder of the old spring mount will have to be trimmed away. And, uh, but I think once we grind out all this rust and get everything out of here that needs to come out, um, we should be able to support this all the way across with that U. It's going to leave a nice flat area there, but then I'll be able to put the, uh, uh, the upper mount tube for the coilovers, you know, right somewhere in there, uh, running all the way across. So let's see what happens.
is our, our horseshoe. Let's see if it works. All right, got the channel all cut out and ground out the slag. Um, take a look here. Let's uh, see if it'll work for us. All right, this is again the uh, driver's side and uh, Obviously, we're not going to be able to get up high enough to clear that that hump under the out of your light out of the frame rail. But uh, I think this is going to work out pretty nice. That's as far as I can slide it up right now, but it fits really well. Um, I don't know how you can see that, but uh, I can stay out of the light for you. But looks like it's going to fit pretty good. May not even have to do that much coping at the top corners here um, by the time it's slid up in place. Let's see. It'll be, yeah, maybe a little bit. Just kind of up around that, that far edge on each end. So, next challenge is to see about cutting out what's got to go and get rid of uh, enough rust here to make sure we can get a good weld. So, Let's uh, come up with a plan for that.
All right, got the frame rail cut out and ended up going a little different direction than what I had originally talked about. Instead of the two by three, um, it's turned, you know, was gonna do the job. I decided to go with a two by four rectangular tubing. Uh, same wall thickness, but it got a little higher up and uh, I think it's gonna work out better. So uh, after a little trial and error fitting, um, I'll show you what we've got. Okay, so this is inside the driver's side frame rail. As you can see, rectangular tubing is setting up there. It's just friction fit right now. Um, ended up notching each end where the frame rail's curved just to give me the most height. I did cut down the rail, uh, the, um, the new piece that we're putting on. Went from 18 inches down to about 14 inches. And then, like I said, used a, a four inch tubing instead of a three inch, which as you can see, gets us up, you know, almost right up tight against the uh, uh, factory top of the rail. Um, I think that gives plenty of overlap, lots to weld to. And then up top, I've got, box it in, as you can see, had to uh, do a little work to make it fit, but, it's right up that white line. Once I uh, get it cut, it should work out pretty nice. Let me pull the uh, frame rail off here and I'll show you where it goes, how it fits. I don't have a lot of uh, nice stuff to work with there. As you can see, I'm, I'm pretty much right inside the old uh, mount for the uh, coil spring. But once this sets up in place, uh, it'll weld in there nice and close up the top of that so I don't end up with uh, rust and water and whatever else getting in there. So anyway, that's the uh, inside and I will show you the outside as soon as I move the light. All right, so here's the outside. Um, I haven't cut completely the inner fender yet just because it's not gonna do us much good until we get uh, you know further along. But for now, it gives me the clearance I need. I'll stick the uh, brace back up and you can see fits pretty nice uh, once it's capped and once it's clearanced we're, we're gonna pick up a good little over an inch of tire spacing which seems like a lot of work for it but uh, it is what we need so anyway I will keep working at this and uh, see you shortly all right we're back I may have gotten a little ahead of myself and forgot to get the camera out but uh, made some progress the axle frame rail brace whatever you want to call it is all welded up in place and then I kind of went a little beyond that and started cutting out the fender well to make room for these tires so I'll show you where we're at at this point also wanted to maybe give a little update here on the subframe connectors apparently in my last video the editing software didn't like the last 40 seconds or so and went black. So I've had some requests to kind of show how the subframe connectors turned out. I will uh, do that for you here in just a few. All right, we're gonna have to make this quick. I'm down to about 7% battery and my charger's not out here. So anyway, here's a look at uh, that brace that I used. That narrowed up the frame rail, picked up about an inch and a quarter. Uh, I'll show you on the other side what I cut out in case you don't remember. Uh, eh, it's kind of dark over here. I don't know if you can see. But well, basically this whole humped area is now gone to the level of that white line. But I'll get you a better shot of that when we have some more light. Anyway, you can also see all the room I opened up here in the fender well. But what that's allowed me to do is tuck these... 30 and a half by 11 and a half inch tires up in there nicely. So I will uh, show you that when I get a chance to bring it back down again. And before we lose battery, here's the subframe connectors. Hopefully you can see that. I know there's not a ton of light coming through there, but we're underneath and that's what happens. Uh, welds aren't the greatest looking, but I've got 60 year old sheet metal that I'm working with here and as much as I ground and well or wire brushed and everything there's still you know impurities impregnated but uh, you know like they say along with everything else up here 
the uh, a grinder and paint make me the welder I ain't so it's tight it'll hold I'll clean it up maybe give it another hit but uh, I think it's gonna be just fine so anyway I'll get back with you and uh, we'll work on some more of this as soon as I can get some more charge in this battery all right so we've got the brace welded in I tried something different this time after a long period I don't know hour hour and a half of grinding and sanding to get through all the rust did some research and decided to try some flux core wire see if that would help <clears throat> with any imperfections that were still left in the steel didn't do too bad it's not pretty welds but it's tight and it didn't fight me as much as the uh, solid core wire this time so anyway we are uh, all tied together now on the passenger side uh, obviously you got a lot of sheet metal work to finish up in here once we uh, locate the rear end and, and all that good stuff but one thing I did see and I'm gonna go ahead and take care of are all the holes uh, this was actually where the pan hard bar bracket was and then this we kind of knew this is just thin metal and rust um, there's some more in the bottom here that we're gonna have to deal with as well probably wouldn't be a big deal with the 12 point cage it's gonna run all the way to the back of the frame rails but it bugs me anyway so I'm gonna splint that I think with uh, not quite as thick a steel it doesn't have to be as strong as what we were using up here to you know hold the cross members and stuff but um, I'll also got a little patch still where I cut a little bit bigger than I needed to anyway uh, what I did let me grab it for you is uh, I've got some 20 gauge might be 18 gauge anyway it's uh, probably about the thickness of what the original frame rail was maybe a little thicker but I traced the frame rail on it and then cut it out with the uh, plasma cutter so that's gonna go right up in here after I grind out you know the better part of all the rust that I can um, I'll mount that on there uh, weld it up and then probably do a uh, stretch across the bottom as well just a strip uh, I don't know it's inch and three-quarter wide and until I uh, get past these little thin spots so I'm gonna take care of that just to make myself feel better about it like I said it probably wouldn't be a big deal anyway but uh, if nothing else it keeps it from you know being able to take on water and anything uh, that might make it worse so that's going to be the next process so I'm gonna get at it all right guys as you can see I am filthy head to toe but I have the passenger side finished up welded in place I think you saw that a little bit ago but the frame rail splints that I was talking about are now mostly finished up I've got a still weld to the top of the, um, to the floor the trunk pan up on top up here um, you can see you know when you cut that it separates at the seam so that's still got to be welded in but the frame rail is fresh and solid now inside and out um, still got to fill in that little gap there but I'm out of time for tonight and then uh, we'll work on filling in the fender wells and things later after the rear ends mounted so hopefully at this point just about everything is ready to start locating the rear end I've got uh, the axles are out to the machine shop right now getting re-drilled uh, just to give you kind of an update on where the rest of the project sits I had uh, that Dana 60 going in but the with the Corvette front suspension I had a five on four and three quarter bolt pattern and when I bought that Dana 60 it came out of a Mustang and so it had a five on four and a half I looked around for some wheels maybe some dual pattern wheels that would work and I couldn't find anything in a 15 by 10 so the more I got thinking about it you know I almost went with a like a Chrysler police car wheel that was really close but it was actually quite a bit more expensive for the basic same design of wheel so um, one day I just I'm not sure why I hadn't thought of it before but I uh, realized that uh, uh, I could just get the axles re-drilled so 
I pulled them apart and took them over to the machine shop. They are re-drilling and threading them for me. Um, as you can see here, I got the Dana just staged, sitting on a bucket for now. One thing I was kind of surprised when I bought this rear end, the seller had told me it had a spool. It doesn't, clearly. It's got a sure grip, which is fine. Um, it'll make driving on the street easier than that spool anyway. And uh, I'm sure the traction will be just fine. Um, real impressed with the rest of this. The Mosier axles are just huge, heavy, and uh, very solid. I think this is going to be uh, exactly what we need in the back of there. Um, just kind of walk around. We've got some, I got some leaf spring sliders that need to come off. I was kind of confused by these brackets at first. Uh, so I asked around and it looks to me from what all accounts that those were shock mounts. Like maybe there was a L bracket or something that had bolted to it. I'm not exactly sure how that worked, but somehow the shocks came off of that, um, under the car it was on before. So anyway, that kind of gives you an update where we are right now. Uh, hopefully I get those axles back this week and start uh, locating the rear end in the back of this thing. We'll get the, it's got to be a little bit of geometry that I'm not real sure about yet. Uh, I've got to lay out where the ladder bar mounts, uh, where the cross number goes. I believe, I think they're 36 inch. But so it's going to require, you know, mocking up the axle underneath the car, kind of sliding it around, getting it back in, you know, where it needs to be and getting a rough idea on ride height as well. So a lot of playing around. I'll try to get some more video of that and uh, keep you guys updated. I've got to order some wheels uh, at some point here as soon as the budget allows and then we can get the, uh, the tires mounted up and uh, maybe in the next week or two have this thing uh, sitting on its own weight on the ground that'll be the first for in several months so that's it for this video i will talk to you guys soon